on, I wanted to um, do a quick tutorial on setting up your KeePass. KeePass is a password manager that will allow you to securely keep not only your wallet passwords, but uh, any password for any accounts that you want. Um, some members have also uh, have messaged me and let, them, let me know that they use it for not just their wallets, but for other accounts that they may have online. So, first thing we want to do is we want to visit keypass.info. And this is the website right here. And when you first get there, you will see under latest news, keypass 2.0 release. That's the link that you want to click. And also under the news, when you get to the news page, you want to click on the link that says download key pass. Now, this tutorial is going to cover Windows. Uh, it's pretty intuitive, so if you watch this tutorial on Windows, you should be able to get it on your Mac. Um, I will probably most likely be releasing a Mac tutorial as well, but for you Mac users out there, you can... Uh, go through this tutorial and it should be pretty straightforward on instructing you on how to set up your tutorial. Now, you will see a couple of options. These are the ones that you want to pay attention to. Installer for Windows and Portable. Now, this is the exact same program except that Installer for Windows will actually download it and install it on your computer. Whereas Portable, you can actually download, install this and install this on your jump drive slash USB drive slash thumb drive. Uh, that's very convenient if you want to carry it around and keep your passwords with you. It's also very convenient if you want to back up your passwords because you can back up your entire um, uh, key, key, bass, key pass installation on a jump drive slash USB drive slash thumb drive and also um, carry it with you. So this is the one you want. You want to be. You want to download uh, KeyPass. It will take you to SourceForge, which is a repository for downloading, uh, and it should start downloading automatic, automatically. Sorry. Once it does that, once you download, it is a zip file. You'll download it, and you can do this download set a jump drive slash thumb drive slash USB drive and you will see a, a directory structure like this. Uh, keep in mind that the important thing you want to notice here you'll see all of these other files you don't really need to worry about those right now. The important thing is this with the key pass with the little logo that looks like a clock that is the executable file slash application. You want to double click that and activate it to launch it and you will get a blank dialog like this and you'll see uh, where you can create a new um, a new database uh, there's uh, you can create an existing database those will be your first options now, if you haven't set it up at this point we'll be setting up a brand new database when I create new uh, it'll say your data will be stored in a key pass database file which is a regular file after clicking OK, you will be prompted to specify the location to where KeePass should save this file. It is important that you remember where the database file is stored. You should regularly create a backup of the database file onto an independent data storage device. But we're going to be creating this onto a jump drive or an external drive uh, because this is the portable version of KeePass. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now it's going to ask me where I want to store this. I'm going to store it in my keypaste file, and I'm just going to leave the database as named as database. Okay. At this point, it's going to ask for a master password. Now, this is the password that will open up the database that has all of your other passwords. You want this password to be a password that you can easily remember and or write it down. Um, you want to write this down and place it somewhere else as a backup and, and you want to memorize this one. Uh, a very interesting feature of this is if you click here on the asterisk you can actually see the characters that you're using for your password. So I'm going to go ahead and put an insecure password on here. Don't use this. You want to use an insecure password. I'm just going to do password. So I'm going to I'm going to 
I know I won't be able to remember this, but this is just for uh, experimental uh, purposes only for demonstration. I want you to also notice that right here under estimated quality, when you first start to uh, create the password, this portion of the estimated quality bar would be orange. That means that it's not a secure password. You want to keep typing and keep adding to your password something so you, can, you get into this green area. That means that it's going to be a secure password. Okay. I'm going to click OK. Now you want to name the database itself. At this point, the database name, we're just going to call, I'm going to call this one test database. Another security feature of KeePass is that it will prompt you to um, create an emergency sheet. I'll just read these instructions. It says, a KeePass emergency sheet contains all important information that is required to open your database. It should be printed, filled out, and stored in a secure location where only you and possibly a few other people that you trust have access to. It is recommended that you create an emergency sheet for your database. Then it asks if you want to create an emergency sheet now. I do not. If you have the time, go ahead and do it. I highly recommend this. So now we've, we have set up our database. Uh, we've created our database file and named our database. Under our database, we will see other folders or groups. If you look on the Mac, it will say groups. Basically, these are folders that classify your different password uh, username uh, pairs. Now, I want you to take note of um, right up here in the dialog box where it says uh, the database name plus the file extension and this little asterisk right there. That means the database has not been saved. Okay, so whenever you put place a new entry in, you, that is not going to be saved from what you had previously in the database. You want to go ahead and you can click this little just key. And you'll see that the database asterisk is gone and the database information in the database is, has been saved. So in this database, they've created a few, a couple of uh, sample entries. I'm going to open up one of those entries so we can kind of go through the parts of it. Right here, it'll be the title, and you can name that whatever you want. This is the username. This will be the actual username uh, for your wallet users. This will be your wallet account name. And then here again, we have the asterisk again. If we click those, it will tell, it will reveal our password. Now, a lot of times you can generate a new password here, but you want to, if you already have an existing password, you want to store your passwords here. If you generate a password for some other account, not your uh, wallet account, you will be prompted with um, basically options to um, include what types of characters that you want into your password and also the length of it. But we'll get into that another time. But I just want you guys to be able to save your password as generated by your wallet here. I'm going to hit cancel. So here is the sample. There's two samples in this one. You can see that, hey, this password is not very but I'm going to hit cancel on that. Now, what I'm going to do for the purposes of demonstration is I'm going to go ahead and delete these passwords. I'm going to do a right click and delete that entry. It's going to prompt me to confirm. Same thing with this one. Right click, delete entry, prompt to confirm. Now, under our different categories of passwords, on the Mac you'll see it will say groups. We can create a new group. I'm going to go ahead and create a group. I'm going to right click on database and add group. And I'm going to, I'm going to name this group crypto. That is the group itself. Okay. Under crypto, I'm going to create a new entry by clicking here. It says add entry. And you can see for new entries, it's going to generate a very secure password. But we're not going to need that for these of demonstration today because we will use the password that's generated by our wallet. I'm going to name this one 
shares. And I've already set up an account here just for a test account. This one is called the, the account name is MGI Test. I'm gonna copy that and then paste it here under username and also the password that was generated by BitShares. I'm gonna copy that. And paste that into my password. As you can see, this is the 45 character password. It is very secure. It will also want me to repeat the password, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste that there. And then I'll hit I'll click OK. Now you'll see that under crypto I have my entry set here. It is my BitShares account. Now, if I want to go to BitShares and um, log into my account in order to unlock that lock, all I have to do is open up my database. I can right click on the account and I can copy my password and then paste it into the password um, field inside of BitShares. Also, since this is a new entry, I you, you notice here that we have an asterisk here. That means that the database has not been saved because we placed a new entry into the database. So I'm going to go ahead and click the, the um, disk. It is saved. And at this point, I can close my application. Okay? And it's just as simple as that. So I want to thank you guys, and if there's any questions, feel free to email me, uh, and I will see you online.